Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Elemental Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes with me, Get Daved. So, quick recap of the Elemental series and then we'll get going. Elemental is a game put out by Stardock. They also did Galactic Civilization and Sins of a Solar Empire. I really like the work the company's done in general. Um, Elemental was met with less enthusiasm when it originally came out than some of their other titles. It has since received a couple expansions. Um, the first one, you know, it helped the game. It was never a bad game, but it wasn't great like their other titles. Uh, but then Legendary Heroes came out and really, um, I think, bumped the game up to be quite good. Uh, it added some really interesting concepts, and the game itself actually was fairly novel within the 4X strategy genre. So uh, we're going to give it a go here. I've only played through two games, although 26 hours. I've, uh, I've put some time into this game already, so I'm excited to share it. So... Ooh, create character. I've actually never tried this before. Let's go for it, everybody. What are my magical... Okay, first off... Name. Get Daved. Let's see here. We do have to have a faction. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to go back real quick then, and we'll just talk about the different factions. So we've got Lord Relius here. Kind of a cool little uh, story he's got. Um, they are like plus 10% ex experience. That's just really an ability on him. Um, every character has some elemental spells, usually two groups. Um, if it says Apprentice or Disciple, that tells how advanced they are. So this would be two levels in air and one level in fire, I believe. Uh, I might have it backwards. Anyway, and then a couple special skills. Um, these guys are a solid choice. They're kind of combat-oriented. Uh, these guys... So they, they start with uh, some good starting bonuses. Um, actually, I think they're a pretty good faction as well. Their horses are also... I think the only real difference of theirs is that they have a bigger boost at the start of a combat. Ah, yes. And the bazaar. Tarth are kind of interesting. Their big thing is they're good at sneaking around, so... Monsters won't attack this player's unit. Not always, but most of the time. I think there are a couple exceptions to it. Uh, but it's really useful. Because you get to initiate combat with monsters. This is a bit different in 4X games in that the world itself is probably your number one threat. I mean, you can play the entire game and win the entire game without ever going to war with anyone else and not even be going for like a science or a diplomacy victory um, and still have a ton of combat. We'll deal with that more later, though. Um, these guys, they're all, this is basically if you're the mage class. They're also one of the relatively rare dark elemental guys. Basically, the elements are Earth, Wind, Water, Fire, and then there is Light and Dark. Most people use Light, a couple factions use Dark, and these guys are one of them. Also worth noting is, in the world, you'll see these little, um, I don't know, we'll call them sweet spots, where, I, I forget the exact term, I think it's a shard, where you can channel some fire energy or some uh, wind energy or things like that. Um, the light and dark ones are shared. Basically, there will be like a uh, one of those nodes that could go either way. And if you're a dark faction, then it becomes dark. And if you're a light faction, it becomes light. So it's just an interesting little twist on things. These guys uh, honestly seem pretty good. The defensive bonus uh, looks not bad. And being able to convert cities to your side sounds really good too. Basically, oh, and their Cracks Blood, you know, massive defense bonus if you're about to die. Like, that's that's pretty cool. Um, the only problem is they've got that Betrayers thing, which is such a weasel word that I never wanted to try playing as them. Kulon, Killing Machines. Lord Markin, these guys, um, I think, are my favorites. Um, I enjoyed Tarth a fair bit. The Relius was alright, too, but these guys I really liked. Um... You sort of win through military economy with them, which is really how I like to play these sorts of games. Um, 
or at least I often also will have a bit of a research focus, but this actually, this sorts of build, or this sort of race sort of helps compensate for some of the weaknesses in my strategy, which I greatly appreciate. These guys are also probably not bad. They're a bit more evil aligned, um, but otherwise a little bit similar to uh, the Ironier blood over here. Uh, Warlord Virga is another killing machine, and then Queen Procipine? Porcupine. Queen Porcupine. Uh, she is super mage. Um, this is actually a really interesting bonus they have, which we might look into. But anyway, let's get back to creating our character here, now that we've talked about things. I think I will go with the Hasnage. Nope. Kingdom of Gildan. Armor and weapons cost half the normal production. That sounds pretty good. These guys are a little heavy on the the big the big cumbersome equipment. Tarth is kind of nice because they have really high quality chainmail instead, and more units can use chainmail, and it doesn't lower your speed the same way. But they've got that 10% unrest. This is like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> every rebellious people ever. Yeah, I think we're going to go with my, my friend and yours, the Gildan. Uh, I'm a guy named Get Daved. Now, you kind of have to know what's going on with these moves. I guess we could... Oh no, we can't crank it farther than... Wow, level uh, 2 even. There are some pretty good moves in a lot of these sets. I'm kind of partial to the life series of spells. Um, the more advanced levels of it are really nice. Uh, water has some interesting sort of status impact ones. Uh, producing an extra research point in a city is actually a really huge deal early on as well, so that's worth thinking about. Uh, what else can we take out here? Earth, I mean, they're all pretty good. Um, Ore of Might, so basically cities will have different resources. Um, the three fundamentals are f food, production, and magic, basically. Um, not under those terms. Essence is the term for magic. That determines how many spells you can cast to bone or to boost a city. And as you can see, like, plus one defense per essence. So that, you know, if your city only has one essence, which is a pretty normal possibility, not so good. If it has four, which you could also easily pull off, and then it's amazing. I think we will go with life and... air because I really like haste all right what was your profession plus 10 fame from completing quests so fame is how you recruit other heroes the big special game mechanic in this game is the heroes so this guy is going to be a major unit that we can use and um, we can continue to recruit other people pretty much just as good as him um, but it requires fame, and at first it doesn't require much fame at all to do these sorts of things. As the game goes on, it starts requiring a ton, so it can give you pretty good advantages. Um, also, heroes can't die like regular units. The regular grunts, they can die left and right, and they will, but heroes don't die. They do, however, receive injuries. Sometimes they aren't bad, like there's one called Just Scratch, where they literally just have a scratch um, other times though you know they'll be missing a finger or they'll have like hallucinations some of them aren't even necessarily bad like hallucinations is good it makes you better at magic you're seeing a new realm it kind of makes you bad at self-awareness um, diplomat don't think we need that one plus 50% attack versus beast not bad scholar is not bad Spells do 25% more damage. I usually don't go 
Ooh. I usually don't go spells with my main character. I am going to go with Noble. Because Unrest is very frustrating. Ah, yes. And we can train Iron Golems, who are pretty awesome. They're a very useful tank. All right. Next, the screen. Oh, whoops. I forgot to take care of these things. All right. Actually. There we go. I am going to go for this. Soul Spark I don't think of as being particularly useful, but all these bonuses, particularly the plus one initiative per shard, that's just too tempting to say no to. All right. And we'll take Life Apprentice again. All right. Brilliant. What do you do? I've never been brilliant. Plus 10% experience. That does seem nice. Discipline. Bonuses to initiative are fantastically useful. Summon a familiar that can cast all the spells I can? Interesting. That would be good if we had more of a mage class. And plus two mana per season. That could be very useful early on, as your mana uh, does not go up that quickly at first, but... We'll go for might. Backstory. Woo. And my appearance. All right. Yeah, this is not going to do. We'll have to worry about the pants later. This now officially became a no pants let's play. The graphics aren't quite as sharp as, uh, well, most games, but... <laughs> I'll give myself the Riker beard. And a flat cap, hey? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Pretty in-depth character creation going on here. Male eye green, relatively close. <laughs> close enough. All right, we'll just go with the default. Body. Oh, I don't think I need any pants. Not anymore. Or any shirt, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that I picked the noble trait, but my guy can be uh, like this feral, golem-like critter. Kind of like the first one I had, yeah. That guy looks like he's ready to rumble. And I am kind of partial to starting with, uh... Ooh, wow. Enchantments on this unit have no maintenance. Swords I'm a little biased towards because they don't lower your initiative as much. And you can counterattack with them, so that's kind of useful. Looks like we uh, can't start with too much here, but I don't want to waste one of my early picks on such a thing. And clothes. Assassin's robe, no, that's no... Oh, and I lost my hair. Oh, game. Yeah, I think I'm going to go shirtless, everybody. <laughs> and my splendid cap. All right. I will not be posting this to Facebook, but we will get an appropriately epic background, and 
Get Dave to Zen. Special equipment is mage related. We'll have to think about that as we play through. My act, my own hero is not super, um, not super uh, dependent on magic, but eventually we should be able to support a large number of units that are quite good at that. All right, I think I may just go with a random map. Four to six players, we'll go that way. Balanced, great. That all sounds good. I accidentally wheeled to something else. We're gonna crank up the difficulty a little bit. Oh yeah, world difficulty is different than AI difficulty as well. This is all about the monsters we're gonna encounter, but we'll go with hard. Um, that all sounds good. Random events are terribly frustrating. Slight economic advantages. Wow, what's it like at this one? All right. Well, we'll 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 take them on like that. And I'm not even sure what kingdom versus empire balance means. We'll go with even. Uh, we could pick custom opponents. Whoops. Right, I suppose this is fine. Yeah, sounds good, everybody. And let's get going, shall we? So we spent our time at setting up the world, customizing our own race of people. I have a nice, uh, or I guess not race of people, but faction. I have a nice backstory of rags to riches. Cost me the shirt off my back. I've been working on self-actualizing. <laughs> right on. Okay, so now to the game proper. Everything is dangerous. That's the first thing you need to know. We have the ability to start a city right away. And this here is the yields, or are the yields of the land. You'll also see these treasure chests all around us. Those contain treasure, but we have to go there with a leader. Um, our hero also starts with the ability to create one city. So they're kind of like a settler, but they will persist as a unit after that. So generally speaking, I think the best way of going about things is just add up the total values of all the yields. Um, you also want to consider distance to things like crystal crags. Um, we will need crystal to build really good stuff relatively shortly. Uh, I would also say essence is slightly better in the long run than all of the other bonuses. So we actually have a really good starting tile here. So I'm going to go for it. Settle. Empire founded. All our years of study in swordplay and mining have led to. All right. And now our main city manager right here. Kind of, our, in my opinion, our first goal is to get to 10 fame. So we could do that by building a uh, tower of dominion and it would improve the growth of there. Improving Essence would be really cool right away. Let's just get the details on the city right now. We already have 14% unrest. Um, that comes from, okay, well, yeah, obviously right there, taxes um, and your number of cities. You can grow a city and get certain bonuses that um, will negate the city count penalty, bon or penalty, city count penalty, penalty. Good work, Dave. Uh, over here, it's the enchant enchantments we've cast on the city. So right away, we want to do things to improve the growth and possibly the money as well. Unrest improvement. That's not really causing us problems yet. 
I am going to go with the Tower of Dominion because that will fast track us to getting a second hero and therefore that will fast track us to getting a decent army. Um, I think that'll do for now. Let's get going on the research as well. If I could harvest some... Well, basically everything's good at the start. Improving our research is uh, not a bad idea. Harvesting that crystal would be very useful. That would improve like everything we could ever want. Also, our best bet is early uh, advancement in civilization tech, so I'm just going to go for increased research speed. Usually not a terrible idea. Alright, leather van braces. It's not a shirt, but it's a start. So we can equip our character. Let's just take a look at him real quick. Uh, so yeah, that gave us plus one to defense, and you can see him wearing it right there. We could trade that with other heroes if we had other heroes. Um, alternately, we could also uh, sell it, or we could try buying things from shops because we're in our own territory here. Um, anything you've researched, you can purchase at a shop. The researching allows you to manufacture it for armies of generic units, like these spearmen that are with them. And generally speaking, the generic units are better for mass offense, but they cannot hang in there as well as the heroes. That would be my general rule for uh, most of the game. In the later parts of the game, they can hang in there all right, too. Now, these are all weak units. I think we can probably handle, but I don't want to lose any of my guys. I'm just going to do a quick save here. <laughs> uh, we'll just call it LP1. This is just because I'm afraid of losing something in a crash, because I had that happen a couple times in uh, the Knights of the Old Republic series I'm doing on the side with Snap, but Ball's in his court for that right now, so I'm doing this. We could also start a quest by visiting this humble inn. Let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah, what's the worst thing that could happen? Alright, we can build a crystal quarry here. That uh, is going to be tied to the nearest town, which is our capital, our only town. It'll take six turns when we get around to it, but I will probably interrupt that production. Alright. My lord, Bruntus the Tenebris has taken over my workshop. If you can take care of him, I'll give you a warding kite shield. Sure. Threat level weak. So now, that workshop spawned, that's where the next part of the quest is, and it's at medium difficulty. That might be a little difficult for the amount of ferocity we have right now. Assassin's Knife. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It is stronger, it still counterattacks, it's better against champions, and it gives us an initiative boost. I think I'll go for it. Also, I've neglected an extremely important early detail, um, which I should have done instantly. Uh, I'm going to cast some spells on our city. You can dispel them anytime you want. I'm going to go for it and cast them all right now. We can also cast these... Uh, bonuses on our character as well, which is something we'll get to in a moment. Uh, I'll go for money first. And let's have our first battle. We'll get all this taken... Wait. Maybe I can enchant myself going in. Plus three to spell resistance and hit points. I'll take the dodge. So that's cutting into our... Uh, mana recovery, but we're at a net gain because we have just so much essence in this city, so we're off to a really nice start in that regard. And battle mode. There is an auto-resolve you can try, but we'll, we'll deal with that more later. So, characters have movement range. I am a little concerned with these guys reaching us, so I'm going to basically posture to get out of range. You can attack diagonally of this guy over here. And instead we're going to focus on 
confronting these two. This guy's gonna get flank attacked. Oh good, a dodge. Alright. The way they've positioned themselves, I think it's actually more ideal to go after this guy now, so that's what we're gonna do. Seven, our sovereign here. Making some pretty short work of these guys. Okay, that was a special ability for that spears have where they can attack two units in range at once. So that was mildly frustrating, but we're doing pretty well here. Your characters will also regenerate hit points at the end of every turn. Good work, team. And level up for the hero. All right, and this will probably be the last major choice I make in this part of the LP, or in this episode. So once you hit level two, you choose your path or your specialization, and that's what you commit to. So early on, warriors are pretty nice. Uh, they have access to a lot of really good combat abilities. Commanders, I would say their main benefit is that they can give experience bonus bonuses to the army that's with them, and I mean every unit in the army. Defenders, not such a huge fan of. Um, assassins, insane uh, killing attacks. They've just got some really good ones. And Mage, um, I mean, it should be obvious. Better magic. So, I think I'm going to go with Commander with our main character. Because eventually we'll have an army of heroes traveling with us. And if we... Uh, Oh, where is it? Govern. There we go. You just have to click it to get the, the details list. So, we can advance on the general level through our skill with magic, or on the commander chain you can start going through these. And down here is where the really good army experience bonuses are. A lot of these are really good. Chainmail proficiency, also nice. We'll deal more with this sort of stuff as time goes along. And on that note, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Next time, hopefully we'll expand New Paradin a little bit. Oh, I should have... I wonder if we can rename it. Yeah. Legendary Capital. Capital? And Capital. Alright, there we go. Oh, it doesn't fit. Well, that doesn't matter. All right, yeah, in the next episode, we'll, uh, yeah, hopefully it will grow. Might uh, try completing this quest, and yeah, who knows? I'll see you there, everybody.